<clears throat> just a few words of welcome. So, um, we just finished a uh, uh, meditation in the dojo. Uh, just very simple uh, sitting and walking. So, um, that feels very American style, <laughs> secular. <clears throat> Uh, incorporates um, uh, homage to uh, continuation of the Vajrayana tradition from uh, India and Nepal and Tibet and uh, my teachers. <clears throat> Actually, my preference is uh, I really just like sitting meditation, <laughs> um, but I see the value when uh, uh, doing activities together. So activities together are ritual, <laughs> even if you're just walking around in a circle. Um, just depends what you think is religious ritual and what you think is just kind of ritual. So, but um, basically like very, things very simple, um, but, uh, uh, you know, my teachers who I love and respect, um, uh, are always saying, oh, please, please be traditional. So I understand that. So like uh, in, in the temple here, I have to be Lama Jinpa and have to wear certain things and be a certain way and sit in a certain, certain way. And I, I've come to accept and respect that so that my uh, teachers and uh, people that are culturally connected with Mongolia, Tibet, and India, and Nepal feel, feel more comfortable, you know? Like that. So, <clears throat> the day I'm wearing, like, uh, uh, now, Dorpa, uh, Zen, like that, it's very, right, uh, like, Milarepa, hopefully. So, <clears throat> we're all here to think. All right, let's start. I'm going to start with seven line prayer. Can everyone hear me okay? Hello? How about now? Still now? Okay. Still can't hear me, Sue? No? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to start with uh, seven line uh, prayer of Guru Rinpoche. to Shakyamuni Buddha, teacher, Bo destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, Bo destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, Bo destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, Bo destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, Bo destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, 
gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. When you chief of humans were born, you took seven steps on this great earth and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you who are wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds. Supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, a face like a stainless moon, a color like gold. To you I pay homage. The three worlds who are not like you, who is free from dust. Matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, field of ocean-like merits and good qualities, to the thus gone I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning, to the dharma that brings peace I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, while abiding in the pure trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities. To the Sangha also I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha. Homage to the Dharma Refuge. Homage to the Great Sangha. To all three ever devout homage. To all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects. With supreme faith I pay homage. Do not commit any, any non-virtuous non action. action. Accumulate virtue and goodness. Subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning, and clouds. Look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all seeing and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrators from the oceans of existence, stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma. May I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distant. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginningless time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jeweled mandala, together with other pure offerings and wealth, and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. O oh, my masters, my yadams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith. Accepting these out of your boundless compassion, please send forth waves of your blessings. Idam guru ratna mandalakam nirayatiyami. Part of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I prostrate the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time, the Bhagavan was dwelling on mass of vultures mountain on Rajagriha, together with the great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avlukteshvara, looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then, through the power of Buddha, 
The Venerable Shari Putra said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya at Lokiteshvara. How should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avukteshvara said this to the Venerable Shari Bodhi Putra. Shari Putra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of profound perfection of wisdom, should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form, emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Chariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Chariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, no phenomenon. There is no eye element and so on and up to and including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, up to and, up to and including no aging and death and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, because, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequal, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth since it is not false. The mantra of perfection of wisdom is declared. Thayata gate gate paragate parasangate bodhisoha. Repeat it 21 times on your own. Hayata, gate, gate, paragate, parasangate, bodhisattva. Shariputra, the bodhisattva, mahasattva, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the bodhisattva, mahasattva, Arya, Avukteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage. It is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom, just as you've indicated. In the Tagata's rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharivadi Putra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Arya of Lukteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised at that spoken by the Bhagavan. request to turn the wheel of dharma to fulfill the needs of all beings at their various levels of understanding we request that you turn the wheel of dharma including the lesser greater common and extraordinary approaches thank you patty could you get me a support cushion for my knee see one of those little flat ones right by yeah there you go My right knee doesn't 
stretch the way it used to. <laughs> it's okay to prop yourself up with cushions. <laughs> So as I mentioned earlier, I, I, I do have a bias towards um, meditation. meditation. <clears throat> Generally, uh, in our lives, in our Dharma practice, of course, there's group gatherings like this where we um, do meditations together and there's study and there's um, good activities, compassionate activities, and it's um, cleaning and sweeping and maintaining things. <clears throat> Maybe I am influenced a lot by um, my years of Zen practice too, that um, it's all about sitting and sweeping. <laughs> <clears throat> The, uh, however, uh, the most important thing that Dharma is about is um, experiential knowledge, experiential truth, the lived experience, the truth of our lived experience. <clears throat> so uh, when we're doing any activity, whether it's study or uh, prayers, they're pointing to our actual lived experience. Prayers we do actually, I think of as narrative meditations. These are um, poems and spontaneous utterances that people remembered um, that were the basis or the expression of someone's experiential realization. So uh, Buddhist yoga practices, all yoga practices are based on is um, repeating the realization of uh, those people or beings that uh, we, we want to attain ourselves. So uh, all the knowledge um, is based on um, investigation, of course, but uh, also repetition. So if someone says uh, whether the yoga tradition is what we call Hindu or Buddhist, um, I had some realization doing this, um, people will say, that's great, I, I, I'm going to repeat what you did. And that's a very important thing to remember about yoga that's different than some other religious traditions, is that um, it's repeatable. It uh, has a path, a pedagogy. So if someone had the experience and they're willing to share it, uh, then we can have the same experience. It's really good news. It's not based upon um, luck or grace or um, you know, birth or uh, wealth or something like that. However, it is based upon effort. So if we want to, um, of course, be you know, a famous dancer or you know, be in the Olympics, we, we have to do a lot of training and we have to repeat things. So um, please settle in. If you're just starting, please settle in for the rest of your life. <laughs> Practice. If you already started, please settle in for the rest of your life, right? So even when we've attained some experiential realization in our tradition, um, if people are interested, we teach. Um, if it's helpful, we share it. Um, have a closed fist. And the sharing and the teaching uh, may correspond to the way we learned ourselves, but it also has to correspond to the situation, right? So um, that's why here at Lions Roar, um, I like teaching from both uh, a lineage tradition, in other words, realizations and practices that were passed down over thousands of years and also in a secular way, meaning of the times. So um, I think we're, uh, we're doing well at both, I hope so, but I, I like people's feedback. So are we uh, 
uh, passing on and uh, experiencing uh, realizations that many male and female yogis have over thousands of years. And are we also discovering new things and making it applicable to Sacramento and <laughs> Dubai? That. <clears throat> uh, I'm hoping that uh, anyone here is interested in those two things to, to learn from people who have gone before uh, and hopefully save ourselves some time, but also um, to be contemporary and to be uh, present in the moment and to have a vision that uh, plays it forward. So that, that way yoga um, has kept alive and um, we've seen quite a change over the last, uh, well, I have, so um, the last 51 years that I've been practicing some form of yoga. And at my age, I grew up in New York and um, got a TV when I was about six or something. <laughs> and guess who was on TV? Lily has fallen. Anybody know who that is? Yeah. No, Doug does. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you know who Lily is? Yeah. I don't know if she's still alive, but um, just plain black and white, just teaching teaching yoga. And, um, yeah, very sweet, you know, just very gentle, you know, not, wasn't the contemporary power yoga, stuff like that. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, you know, very traditionally, yoga would only be um, taught to a select few and would require, um, in many cases, in India, require diksha. And of course, in Nepalese and Himalayan Buddhism, require initiation. You wouldn't just say, you can just walk to a you know, shopping center and do one flow or <laughs> asha or something, you know. Um, so I am delighted that it's um, uh, it's opening up and delighted that we're looking at the health benefits of yoga too, right? Because um, if we're not um, basically healthy in a physical way, we're, we're not going to be able to do the yoga as well, right? We can always do some yoga no matter what. So fortunately, um, a lot of, um, of the yoga studios, studios uh, end up with you know, on the floor, right? Corpse pose, right? It's very practical. We'll probably end up that way. So it's good training. <laughs> if you say, I can't do yoga, so well, can you lie there and just kind of be dead? Yeah, so you can do it. Everyone can do yoga. It's one of the great things about the contemporary yoga movement. Um, but it was kind of weird, you know, 50 years ago, actually. Now, now, is yoga Kaiser, which is good, you know. So, also the, um, the Tibetan yogas, Buddhist yogas, um, uh, actually, you know, were extremely secret. Uh, they're becoming more widely taught, um, um, but not as widely taught as um, the yogas from the Vedic tradition. So, um, I've been introducing some yoga slowly here, the yoga that um, is traditional, whatever um, Vedic or Buddhist, is, it, it always starts with a healthy lifestyle and um, an ethical, uh, caring approach to life, right? So um, that's why also this morning, uh, nine o'clock, we had a recovery program it's now in its second year. <clears throat> I, I don't, I don't, I've never been able to do it. I don't, I don't do really good yoga when I'm, I'm stoned or drunk or <laughs> just eating too, too big a meal, right? Um, so when, when we actually take care of our bodies uh, and we take care of our activities to be kind and to be helpful, then um, that is the foundation of the yoga practice. It was kind of different in the 60s, you know, it's like um, I'm a teenager, so, um, you know, I didn't want 
lecture on ethics. Yeah. Not eating meat or, <laughs> um, you know, I just wanted to listen to, um, you know, the Beatles and <laughs> get stoned, you know, and then like meditate, you know, kind of thing. This, so <clears throat> now I realize it's very important to have um, a healthy lifestyle. It sounds kind of, it sounded at the time when I was, 18 kind of boring, but I was really healthy, so I didn't care. I could eat in and out burger you know, every day, but now I won't. So that's the first foundation is uh, taking care of ourselves, you know, really healthy just in a physical sense, and then taking care of ourselves ethically. And um, you know, following some precepts, actually. With that foundation, then we do the concentration meditations. So uh, the concentration meditations mean we're actually able, <laughs> this is simple, we're able to pay attention to what we're actually doing. <laughs> it's a good idea, right? It's, it's a good idea. <clears throat> However, even when we're paying attention um, to what we're doing, um, uh, we have to remember that uh, attention is uh, also uh, appearing and disappearing. Attention uh, is, uh, you're paying attention and then for a second you're not. You're paying attention and for a second you're not. This is really important. I'm talking yoga now. Um, that is different than distraction. You see, distraction is, um, we're, we're way off. <laughs> but uh, the, the mind, works through like blinking. So uh, because it works so fast, it appears that it's, um, you know, solid, right? But uh, it, it's on and, and it appears and then it disappears or withdraws. It doesn't die, but it's kind of like appears and disappears. It takes a little rest. See, like we're on and then here, okay, rest. Here, yes. it's like breathing, you know, we breathe in, breathe out. You're supposed to rest on the out-breath, aren't you? So, <clears throat> so uh, it's hard to see that. Um, uh, we can see that with the breath, that this rhythmic, we can even see it in heartbeat. We can even see it in our energy systems and our chakras and our winds and channels, but uh, it's, it's hard to see that uh, in the mind because the mind uh, uh, is, is going actually so fast. Uh, it's likened to like a movie with individual frames that when you spin it real fast, it looks continuous. It looks like there's actually motion going on, right? So the concentration meditations, uh, ashamata or Sanskrit word for, you know, just uh, calmness or Samadhi, you know, oneness, or samapati, meditative equipoise. There's so many words like that in Sanskrit and yoga, um, because we really have to slow down to see how fast the mind moves. So that's why um, <laughs> I hope I'm getting famous for saying, look, at least at least med you know, do do a calming focusing meditation at least 24 minutes a day, okay? <laughs> Even then people bargain with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what else are you doing? You know, you know, so, okay, I'm busy, you know, okay. Yeah, you are, you're too busy. So we, we have to develop that attention quality. And um, I'm glad uh, Susan Farr's, um, you know, leading, um, uh, group through um, uh, Ken Cloud's book, uh, Wake Up to Your Life. Uh, so, uh, there's a lot of meditations in there, but it really comes down to for Ken paying attention. Just like, hey. So, <clears throat> however, even when we have concentration and focus and we're in rhythm with things, um, we actually have to look deeply. We have to still investigate. 
because even with the right lifestyle and health, right motivation, even with compassion, even empathy and joy, uh, even with um, strong concentration, if we're not paying attention or investigating how things actually work, we're not going to be fully able to uh, clarify and be free, not fully able to help others. So um, concentration, uh, you know, so a little bit like I, I, I know how to drive my car so that, and I drive it nicely, generally. That's one thing I don't have. I really don't have road rage. I have other kinds of rage, but I, I, I don't have road rage. I'm making, I'm making a spiritual claim for myself. So I have to be careful. <laughs> Maybe I will on the way over but anyway. So, I, you know, and then I, I kind of know how to operate the car. I do not know how to fix the sucker, okay? That's the wisdom mind, to know how it works. I'm not the mechanic. I don't know how to fix it. So uh, in uh, Dharma, um, to really be free and happy, to really come to full fulfillment as a human being, we want to actually know how things work. We have a drive to know, actually. We like to know how things work. Um, but not only... Um, is it nice for us? If we really want to help others, we have to know how things work. If we don't have the work, we can just say um, something empathetic or unsympathetic. Um, that must be really tough for you. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you're really angry with your IT system right now. <laughs> Sorry you're going through that, <laughs> but I'm... I have no idea how to program anything. So, um, you know, or, or I know how to you know, just kind of do very little, right? But uh, as bodhisattvas, if we train in uh, the higher ethics and motivation, if we train in the concentration and being present, and we know how things work, then we do feel this incredible joy of living. And we also feel very competent to, to be of service to others. <clears throat> Some people want to get specialized training in things um, because uh, they just like it. Like I do, I'm kind of geeky. I like reading um, Buddhist logic. Um, and that wouldn't be very good if I didn't know how to dialogue with, with people, but it actually has helped me to, to talk with people and say, um, well, does that really make sense that the earth is flat? Does it really make sense, you know, that somebody thought they won an election and they didn't? You know, it's not logical, right? So, <clears throat> didn't name any names, okay? <laughs> you know who you are. <clears throat> so, you know, very, uh, so some people uh, can specialize in, in um, teaching yoga. Some people specialize in, um, you know, health issues, um, kind of like nurse and physician and therapist and so forth. It takes a lot of special training. So we're here, you know, um, lines are to do as much as you want to do with that. If you want to lead a good life and not be a nuisance, then please uh, train here. If you want to be really present and alive to your life, please train here. If you want to learn how things actually work, so uh, you have the joy of knowledge and the liberation that comes with that, and you want to be of help to others, uh, please come here too, you know, like that. When we do all three together and bring those all to realization, um, we get what you promised to do in the prayers. If you're paying attention, you promised to be Buddhas. <laughs> Did you realize that? <laughs> or maybe you just skipped that part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's that there's there's a kind of a little bit of escape hatch you can you know since um there's the possibility of future lives you could kind of play it forward but you don't you don't want to actually um we we know that's just the moment in the present but the present keeps going right there'll be another present in another moment you're not going to lose out people say oh 
you know, it's sound like some kind of Darth Vader. Star Wars is too late for me. <laughs> too old. No, it's not. Wherever you start is just right. You know? It's no worries. So um, I like to have some time for discussion and um, questions and complaints from the audience. And that requires people to speak into a microphone so they can be heard by others. And um, who's going to be the microphone person? We can also take questions from, from the virtual man. Oh, you get the first one. Good. And you have the mic. Perfect. Could you please um, go a little bit more in depth about how to um, properly investigate foreign individual clearances as they come up, as they rise, and how we can verify them? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Big question. Don't have total time. Um, the, um, they're different styles, but the classical style is just to start noticing what's there. And, you know, it's kind of a in, taking our inventory, actually. Um, and this, you know, we're, we're hopefully, you know, learning something from people that went before. So we're not taking it on faith. And we're not ha actually having to, we don't want to believe it at first, but we could investigate this. We could the Buddha said, okay, I, I didn't find an Atman. Uh, all I found was five skandhas. So what's the human being made of? Uh, the human being has form like body. Human beings, we, are, we don't have, we are form. Our feeling, we are perceptions. We are um, moods and emotions and we're consciousness. And that's what I found. I didn't find a self in those, I didn't find those as a self, I didn't find a self separate, I just found the five skandhas. And that's addressed in the um, Heart Sutra, right? Uh, because Chenrezi Avalokiteshvara goes on to say, well, even those don't exist as you think they exist. So not only is not Atman, but the skandhas aren't solid things either. But um, the uh, traditional uh, Dharma yoga starts with just kind of a taking of inventory of what's there. As just in the first noble truth, I'm going to tell the truth, the suffer. So what's there? What are, what's there and what's going on? So we're just telling the truth of what's, what's going on with us right now. And we don't, that, that's sometimes the hardest or the easiest. We should generally say, well, um, I'm confused. <laughs> and you go, okay, there's confusion before the mind, right? Like that. It starts like that. <clears throat> so that's why um, you know, the, the talking about what's actually there and um, noticing that and distinguishing uh, different activities of our body, speech, and mind became known as Abhidharma. <clears throat> that's why um, at some level, uh, well, We'll be reading and talking about Happy Dharma forever. <laughs> that. But for um, uh, to start off with, it's really helpful to actually you're you're meditating, doing just calm abiding, just uh, restful, attentive breathing, and and then for your 24 minutes, half an hour, and then just read something intelligently. See. Because that's gonna, that's like helping you do vipassana, helping you do panoramic awareness. So we could sit there and go, okay, I'm very calm now. So what's what's still there? Or we we can get support by um, reading intelligent things. So we're kind of piggybacking on someone else's insight as to what's there. So we're, we 
because sometimes uh, it really helps to read or talk to somebody else. Um, it's kind of difficult to um, see our own mind, to see on a deep level what's there. Usually we need someone to say, you know, are you aware that <laughs> you always do this? Because you know, uh, usually we're hiding from ourselves. So even when we're searching, it helps to have someone um, be present to us and uh, point things out to us in a compassionate but direct way. And that's, um, of course, uh, the role of the guru to do that or mama. And our sangha friends, by the way, and our significant others and our kids, and our family, and the people we work with. You know, are you aware you were chewing, you, you were chewing and talking at the same time? You were talking with your mouth open? <laughs> so Patty and I had lunch with a friend of ours who helps with Mental Health Foundation, Elka, who um, does, um, teaches uh, manners to kids, it's really sweet. Um, she was, oh, I was just with someone the other day and he was had bad table manners. And Patty and I go, what? <laughs> and she was, yeah, talking, he was talking, chewing, you know, at the same time. And suddenly I went, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I had to stop eating. Use, we, we need, we can look on our own, but it goes a lot faster if we look on our own and we look in a mirror. Good question. Is someone with their hand or look at them? All right, um, mine's more of a comment. So taking inventory of our experiences, um, what I found is constantly questioning um, my motivations. Well, why did I do that? Why am I thinking this? What purpose is this going to serve somebody else? And if it's not going to serve somebody else in a positive way, I teach junior high, um, <laughs> then I'm going to keep my mouth closed. Um, and so but even when I'm by myself and I'm kind of inventorying and meditating about who I am and what I present to the world, I'm constantly questioning um, what is my motivation be, to be even to like, why am I wearing this? Is this to put this, this atmosphere toward everybody else that, ooh, look, I'm a Buddhist, I have beads on, or is it that it reminds me to stay centered and um, to stay grounded. And a lot of times I'm walking around my classroom barefoot and kids will kick off their shoes. I'm like, ah, I don't care. Um, but it, my motivation is always being questioned um, because that's when you're looking, to me, that's when you're looking in the mirror is when you're questioning yourself instead of somebody pointing it out for you to kind of look internally at your own motivations for doing anything. Thank you. Do you want to comment or just, no, okay. don't need anything. No. Okay. I don't think you want to comment. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice not to have anybody comment on our stuff, you know, we just get there. You also talked about the foundations. You talked mostly about the um, foundation of, of form, but I wonder if you want to talk about the other foundations. You mean the skandhas? No, the foundations, four foundations of mindfulness. Uh, because are yeah. those not also fields of contemplation? Pardon me? Are those also fields of contemplation, right? Um, the uh, four foundations of mindfulness that Susan's referring to is um, 
uh, a meditative exercise to, you know, pay attention to like our body and pay attention to feelings and pay attention to mental events and pay attention to truths. So it's one way to, um, you know, it's a, a structured Buddhist meditation style that um, you know, it's, it has been particularly popular over the years. Well, it's another way to look into the mirror. Yeah, I mean, all the meditations are actually to look, to look at the mirror, hold the mirror up to ourselves, yeah. The different, um, uh, different lineages and our schools or people in the vast Buddhist tradition, which is not um, uh, small as, uh, you know, the, the role of how much, how much uh, can we do on our own? How much, you know, teachings do we need? How much time do we need? What are the best practices? You know, what's the role of the teacher? These are um, constant um, discussions. A friend of mine calls um, Buddhism the longest running debate society in the world. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes we say meditate on the five skandhas, meditate on the four mindfulnesses, those kinds of things. Meditate on the four noble truths, you know. So in, in India, everything um, is memorized and still, still is to a large degree, even though the texts were written down, but it's probably five or 600 years later. Okay, good. Um, early, earlier today, I was in the recovery group, and I and you were talking at one point about um, details being so important in the way we share. You know details versus talking in generalities and then you and then you said tick tock like time's going forward like it is like we all know but you know i i i when i when you said that i i just looked immediately like how I, that's kind of the way i i talk in generalities and i think i drive people nuts in a way <laughs> you know because but i just because you know instead of being straightforward they don't know uh, what I'm trying to get at. Maybe it gets confused, perhaps. But but I just wonder how how a person who's um, you know not used to talking really directly, because as you know, I'm from Minnesota, <laughs> so <laughs> is my excuse. But it's really a valid one if anyone knows Minnesota people. But um. <laughs> but I mean, I'm sincere. I, I'm sincerely wanting to know about about uh, talking in details without without blame or, you know like how we can be real specific about what's going on with them is without blame i guess if we tend to act be kind of a victim orientated person okay is that too big of a thing to ask no hmm. um oh no using I'm not from the Midwest, I'm from New York, totally different, but I mean, Midwest is usually, I'm fine, thank you. I mean, it's, I don't know. So, <laughs> so you might not even say I'm upset. You're just like, fine, thank you. Um, uh, I think the way we use language is both to reveal and conceal. So, you know, if you say I'm fine, um, then you may be, but uh, a lot of times, you know, you're giving very little information. Or it's just a, you know, social trope. So, you know, it's a pretty strong boundary, right? Are you doing fine? Okay, fine. See, um, if you add a little bit more, I'm upset, then that's, you're letting people in a little bit more. Uh, if someone knows this really well and we say are upset, they, they may be able to figure out what that is. But lots of times when when we're just 
talking about a mood, um, it's, a, it's a difficult middle ground um, because um, we may be uh, wanting people to just kind of go away, almost have to go away, or we may want people to get closer and investigate, right? So a lot of times in my role as a therapist, I'll say when we're just putting out um, an overall thing, it's, it's a little bit like stay away, come closer. So it's confusing to the outer world because they're not sure to leave, to, to leave us alone or to, you know, ask like, well, what are you upset about? And sometimes we want it that way. We, people want to confuse the audience. <laughs> you know, I'm upset and, you know, I'm not going to tell you why. And, I, you know, I want you to find out or whatever. But um, the, the clearest communication, if it's safe and it's possible, is being upset about this, you know, I'm upset that you know you didn't um, go to the store when you said you'd go to the store, right? Just very specific. And gives it, then you give room for the person to address it. In other words, you're addressing the behavior, but you're also talking about your own kind of response to it. But a lot of times people don't feel safe to say that, so. To, they don't even say I'm upset. They just um, humble. Poor communication generally would be, um, you know, I can't believe you didn't go to the store when I asked you to. You're such a selfish, incredibly narcissistic jerk. That, <laughs> <laughs> why, why should I expect you would go to the store? In a way, that's clear communication that you're blaming and. Um, <laughs> I'm dissing someone, but um, it, may not, it may not be the result you want. It's really hard not to do that, right, when we're angry. Like, to also do the personal job. But if possible, um, I would say to be specific and in general, um, Buddhist yoga is very specific. It's very spacious when things are general and they need to be general. We're gonna say in general, it's try to be kind and compassionate and not be a jerk. But it is important to then, well, what does that actually look like? And how would we organize a community of people that are compassionate and trying to be helpful? So we do have to get down to the specifics. So people that are trained to at actual Dharma centers like here, um, realize quickly <laughs> that, you know, um, even though we could say the vision is as vast as the sky, like uh, Guru Rinpoche, uh, we do want your activity to be as fine as barley flour. So we do have a place. We want you to leave your shoes or something like that. Yeah. It's interesting. Is that helpful? I was really on it. How was it helpful? <laughs> we can move on. <laughs> we can move on. <clears throat> you need the microphone. Oh, you're going to get it. I'm a meter halfway there. Sure. How do we? Um... How do we be compassionate to someone who's not direct? Well, I should say most of the time we're not that direct ourselves, right? So that goes for us too. So that's part of it. It's a big part of compassion is realizing, wow, I'm accusing people of not being direct and lots of times I'm not direct either. So going in the same elevator. Usually, um, we have to um, let people know we um, 
are available for direct communication and that we're available for that and we're not going to then take revenge on them. So, and that's a hard one, right? Because people go, um, okay, just tell me how you really feel. And then they do. And then it's really hurtful. And then, then we get hurt. And then we tell them, well, I really think you're stupid too. And, you know, so <laughs> um, it, even around direct communication, there has to be um, you know, the, a sense of helpfulness or or it's just like a, you know, it's a fight, right? Which is a form of direct communication in a sense, but um, generally fights don't end up in the result. They don't end up in clarity. Um, nasty fights, it is. There, there's fair fighting. That's when some, you know, that's that's called real debates, which, you know, hopefully have here once in a while. It's fair fighting. But in general, both people have to have some agreements about being direct. Um, you know, just go broad focus and um, in uh, medieval India, there's that term Buddhist and um, Vedic folks, um, the monarchal folks could debate because there was a very common language. Um, and th there were some basic agreements on what's interesting, you see even though there was differences about conclusions, the, um, both groups um, were passionately interested in how one gets to know something, how to establish valid reasoning and valid knowledge. And, um, that really, from my point of view, that really hasn't happened in Because people, you know, how they use the perception, the investigation, and accept some rules of logic. It's pretty rare. You, you really, it's hard to have a discussion or a debate with someone who's really doesn't accept any common ground at all. Uh, and that's part, part of uh, our task. I see a task at um, Lions or is to work to the place where we can have discussions with people that we really don't have a lot of common ground with. I mean, we do as human beings, but it's, it's really easy to not have common ground around, you know, um, all the hot button issues that, that are present today, right? Thank you. So look for common ground. Pardon me? So look for, look for yeah. So look for common ground. I think it, it's important to go in, you know, do we have any common ground? If we're asking for direct communication, do we have any common ground to start with? Uh, and if we lose that, I'll we'll probably go sideways. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So like this a little bit of you know, and, Sometimes I, I've been told and I it's work because I've tried it. Um, if you talk to some people about gun control, you're immediately going to get a black and white kind of situation. But um, sometimes if you talk to people about gun safety, so let's approach gun safety. We're not, we're not talking about taking guns away. We're, we're just talking about gun safety. Uh, so even any people that are um, know uh, you know very much on um, Second Amendment rights issues yeah they're interested in safety too right so that could be a common ground we can close with the, um, a short meditation Do people want to want to close with a short meditation we should have a short meditation shouldn't we should, yeah. Sometimes the discussions are so passionate here that we, <laughs> we, we do have a lot of common ground. Get 
comfortable.
dedication. Dedication. To the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into the enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chenrezin, Tenzin Gyatso, please, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instruction to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Losang Dragpa, and make the request at your holy feet. Thank you, everybody. I think we have some snacks, maybe lunch. Time snacks in the dojo afterwards. And I'll be I'll be in the library office if people want to say hi later. Oh, we don't have any food. Oh we don't. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Could just be peanuts from Southwest Airlines. <laughs> Yeah, we've got something. Okay. Any other announcement? Do you want to say anything? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Hi. Um, the end of July, the 30th and 31st, that weekend, um, we have a special teacher coming, a woman by the name of Venerable Tenzin Choki, who is an old friend of Lama Dharma, uh, Lama, Dharma Lama, <laughs> Lama Jimpa's, and also a, a friend of, of mine, and probably many of you may know her. Um, she's giving a two-day workshop on cultivating compassion. So there are, uh, it's a small group. We're limited it to 20 but there are a few slots still available. Um, and if you get our newsletter, um, you have probably received um, the information about it. If you don't get our newsletter and you're interested in finding something out about it, let me know and I can forward it, the newsletter to you. Um, but it's um, pretty rare opportunity. She's a wonderful teacher and uh, really funny and bright and just a, a really, really joy to be around. So, you know, it's a two-day work, workshop at the end of July. Thanks. So, um, I just, uh, I just wanted to uh, remind people that everything here is free. And if uh, you're able to help us out at all, we have a donation box as you need. That'd be so much appreciated. Or, or you can on our uh, website, there's a donation button, PayPal. So thank you all for coming. And like I said, I brought a green salad and I'm thinking, I saw something else. I, we have food and we have ourselves. So I hope to see some of you uh, afterwards. <laughs>